This presentation, titled Digital Transformation of Auditing, comes to us from Keith Phillips. Keith has been a change agent from an early age. In 1984, he launched Macintosh in the UK as the marketing director and then disrupted the printing industry with desktop publishing. The UK became Apple's country of the year, and as Apple UK CEO, he climbed Mount Blanc as a team building exercise. Transfer to Apple USA saw him lead business marketing in its digital media strategy. He then retired to New Zealand where he created the nation's first interactive multimedia company, selling it to Rupert Murdoch's News Media. Keith has also participated in a number of technologies from virtual reality to cloud accounting and compliance assessment platforms. And he has advised previous prime ministers on innovation and digital technologies. And with that, take it away, Keith. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Michael. The um, transformation journey has been quite an extraordinary one. It, it all began with this happy fellow saying hello. The original Macintosh. Uh, at the time, I was uh, I had an international marketing job for Gillette, uh, trying to communicate, if you like, to numbers of uh, language groups and ethnic and cultural groups and needed actually a graphic device to do that. I found, found this or well, at least its early phase, the, um, uh, the, the early phase of these graphic technologies, and uh, fell in love with this little fellow, a 128K floppy disk drive, Mac write, Mac paint uh, version, the early stages, but it's certainly been disruptive. And I've followed that transformation journey, as you've said, through numbers of industries, of which now I'm looking at uh, the whole audit area. Fascinating, extremely interesting, part of the world. There are armies of people going out there auditing compliance, uh, certifying, uh, looking at quality, uh, auditing better business, and they are an army of knowledge workers uh, that to this date I don't think have harvested the data and knowledge that, um, that they have uh, the ability to, to do. I go back to Apple and one of the iconic things that was done during those days is the knowledge navigator. And now forgive me for this rather obtuse and blurry image, but it's taken from several generations of video clips on YouTube. It's the knowledge navigator produced in 1987. It was produced and directed by George Lucas of Star Wars, and it had as its uh, architects and designers, people like uh, Wozniak, and um, the vision of jobs, if you like, of the heritage of jobs. At that stage, he was with Next. Uh, but it's produced a vision. The objective of this whole thing was to try and produce a vision of the knowledge worker in the year 2010, uh, so that it actually could uh, enable all of those um, um, all of those software developers and engineers to move in a straight line towards that future. There was something like uh, 30 technologies that needed to be developed and integrated to actually do to deliver the computing that we know uh, today. Remember 1987, there wasn't even a graphic user interface for the internet. And this was all about uh, tapping into databases, visualizing the data, and connecting various data sources to come up with extraordinary uh, visualizations like this. Uh, this was tapping into two very different uh, sets of data, one to perform an animation of uh, deforestation of the Amazon. Uh, the other was to look at Sahara Desert and its expansion, and hence, through those powerful pieces of data visualization, come up with some extraordinary conclusions that had some impact in uh, what we are thinking about in terms of climate change today. And this is, I think, a model of the future uh, auditor. The auditors will turn from uh, people that go into places and tick boxes uh, to serious knowledge workers, people that design knowledge systems, and are able to deliver uh, extraordinary value to all those in a supply chain or a cluster of businesses. But let's have a look at um, the transformations that have occurred, and here's, here's just some of them. Uh, publishing is mentioned. Education, the biggest single education source today is the internet itself. A real-time education just using a search engine. Music, it was, uh, 
it was music that really enabled Apple to survive with its uh, iTunes um, phenomena. Law, architecture, science, business, accounting, and I draw your attention to accounting. Accounting has moved perhaps through the same phases that auditing has, uh, from legacy auditing systems, uh, pen and paper and, uh, and, and or large mainframe accounting, uh, through to software applications that all accountants were using and is now moving into the age of the cloud. And the thing that stands firm in the whole evolution of, uh, of technology, the transformation, is the desire of humans to communicate. It's the internet has an extraordinary transformation. Uh, but moving further uh, into the cloud itself, but, um, uh, and let's see how that will impact audit. And so the technologies and the products that are actually driving change, now this of course is the smartphone. Uh, there are more of these devices, whether they just be mobile phones through to smartphones being used in the world than any other device on, on the planet. Uh, such is the need for humans to connect, to be part of a global knowledge phenomena. Now those devices are evolving rapidly and it's well recorded to how powerful they are now in terms of uh, the driving of our life, the transformation of all of the industries going forward. But these devices are also uh, morphing into things that might be pertinent and helpful to the auditor moving forward. This is a HMT or a head mounted tablet uh, from um, a company called Realware. Uh, the helmet is not part of the, the deal, uh, but this is just borrowing from video game technology, a device which would enable you to look through a screen. The glasses, glasses themselves give you a vision of perhaps the audit that you're doing. Uh, you're able to, at the same time, look at something. Somebody else can see what you're seeing somewhere back in an office that may have expertise in a particular area, advise and guide you as what to do. So this kind of technology is, is already transforming the way we audit remote places like um, uh, oil rigs, for instance. But I can see it coming to be ubiquitous in the auditor environment. So this is real stuff that's there today uh, being used. So devices are starting to move into all parts of our body. But the second big uh, technology, a uh, big shifting technology is the cloud itself. Uh, the ability for people uh, to communicate with other people, to upload data, to download data, get access to the cloud. And the, the preponderance of the cloud, I think, is, is, is creating a great shift. Uh, the ability in the accountancy area for the accountant to connect with the client and do that on a real-time basis. The ability to be able to track through various data forces uh, um, a, a product or a service through a supply chain uh, using one central piece of information with multiple people having access to that. But along with the cloud and its interconnectivity uh, comes the Internet of Things. It's much talked about. All devices, uh, all places are, are, are being connected together. With, through drones, for instance, we can, uh, we can visualize areas like uh, fields and farms and map uh, how uh, their water or their, um, their fertilizer levels, etc., and pull that data in to be able to then link with other data such as crop yields and so on to create um, images and information uh, that we've never had before. So the Internet of Things, obviously, is changing of the world as well. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence, a much abused and, uh, and much haloed artificial intelligence. The ability then for um, large computers to um, diagnose um, our ailments, medical ailments, etc., cetera, uh, better than, than uh, the, um, uh, the medical practitioners themselves, the ability to beat Grand masters in chess and all that by processing massive amounts of data, uh, having things like real time learning involved. I don't want to get too stuck on artificial intelligence because I think we're, we're not yet in the age of business intelligence as auditors. 
In other words, we're really not assembling the data that exists today and perhaps using the ordinary tools of um, business intelligence to enable us to um, uh, understand what's going on. Uh, and so we should stay in that frame until such time as we actually are gathering enough intelligence to then start to deploy the, uh, the permutations and formulae that will enable us to move beyond, beyond that. We've got to arrive, I think, at a point where we know what people are doing and then we know what the results of that are doing and we need to gather the data on both sides of those. In accountancy terms, we want to have the accounts but we also want to have the processes and systems and capabilities that people are, are delivering and then make those synapse leaps, those huge um, jumps that the human brain and experience can, can actually make to advise, guide and decide on uh, where to go next. Where, um... So that's um, moving on from artificial intelligence. Let's sort of drop down to the earth and actually have a look at uh, some actual ways in which <coughs> oh, excuse me in which people today are in fact um, using some of these technologies uh, for impact the one i start with first is um, tourism australia a vast continent uh, any of you that have tried to fly over it uh, it's an extraordinary emptiness but the tourism exists all along the edges on both sides the ability to actually visit places and do on-site inspections is somewhat limited, necessary, but somewhat limited. Now, the tourism industry obviously wants to ensure that compliance, you know, health and safety and other things is there, but they also want to ensure that there's a quality product and a quality product that's uh, continuing to improve. So they use this, cl this cloud platform that has a, um, um, a window into it uh, that the ordinary tourism company can take your motels, hotels, scuba diving outfits, and they can elect to be part of a quality process. Uh, so the first step is self-assessment, you know, registration, if you like, and uh, uh, through a, a login like this, uh, and, and, and then a self-assessment, a self-assessment that requires the evidence to be uploaded using your digital camera, say your iPhone or whatever, to take pictures, you say, do you have a swimming pool? Yes a picture of the, the, the swimming pool. You can tell from a picture um, a thousand words of quality, you know, the quality of the water, the way the pool is maintained, etc. on that sort of basis. So the first step is to do a self-assessment. From the self-assessment, then you have um, auditors, online auditors, and they may be specialists in particular areas, there may be teams of them, they, may, they certainly will be in different geographies, actually assessing that audit, asking questions, a certain amount of interaction between the client and the, um, and the auditor themselves, until such time as they feel that they've uh, taken that as far as they can, and then they do a risk assessment. Uh, do we need to do an on-site verification of this particular uh, uh, market? Uh, the result is that uh, having harvested the evidence supplied to them using remote auditing, uh, they can then make a risk decisions about who to visit. Now this particular uh, example is augmented by some macro data, um, some metadata. The uh, data that's coming off customer satisfaction scores from uh, Expedia and um, Lonely Planet, for instance, can be made available to the auditor themselves so they can cross check that what they think is going on there is being reflected in the customer satisfaction data and that gives us a vision of where audit is going. Uh, the ability to actually seek evidence and define the process and systems that people are going through but also to tap into data which give us early morning signs that quality is going adrift or compliance is not actually occurring in certain places so that we can dig in. Uh, and then that, if we structure our audit so that we're able to pull in those two sets of data, uh, progressively as we get more and more of the data, we can start then to apply artificial intelligence. Uh, if somebody's doing more of this, they're gonna produce this kind of result or uh, um, let's have a look at the top, top 10 performing or highest quality businesses, find out what they're doing and as a result, look at the expectations of improved, um, improved performance. Now, a lot of what I've talked about is really business intelligence, it doesn't require 
artificial intelligence, uh, do not be put back or, or um, uh, disturbed by all of that. Here's um, another benefit. Once you've got your, your market, your supply chain, your cluster uh, wired up, if you like, got them part of the cloud, you can make massive and quick changes if you need them. This is a terrific example of doing that. Obviously, the big need to start to get confidence of tourists in the tourist product uh, required a program like this, uh, qualifying people in terms of their best practice um, uh, cleaning um, of, uh, for COVID uh, and taking them through a quality program to actually enable them then to put up stickers and provide reassurance that they uh, or a COVID clean uh, tourism practice. So, and that comes from wiring up your, uh, your markets and building a relationship with them from a program such as that. I'll go through numbers of other examples. This is the avocado industry in New Zealand, 80% of which is sold to Australia. Uh, and the rest to the international markets. But here again, they are using a, um, a platform to do the audit. And it starts off with um, uh, the farmer. The case of Avoco, one of the case studies here, there are 800 farms. Uh, each of those 800 farms goes, starts off with a, um, a self-assessment leading through to a qualified auditor verifying and checking on that. Uh, and then you get your, um, your certified auditors such as uh, SGS and Bureau Veritas, et cetera, that they would then come in and audit on this particular program, a square root of the total number of, uh, um, number of farms to check uh, the validity of the um, of the assumptions going forward. There's a, this kind of system has a lot lot of uh, um, advantage to it in that you can actually track and capture, if you like, the the organisation or farm in this particular case or uh, producer group. You can capture them uh, at the beginning. And then you can actually track them all the way through the supply chains. In the agricultural industry, there's something like 10 different uh, audit requirements or compliance requirements from workplace health and safety to uh, environmental sustainability through to labor force, uh, through to uh, <clears throat> logistics and refrigeration, etc. There's something like 10 different requirements. Uh, today, they have been conducted uh, largely, let's, let's say in the past, they've been conducted largely using independent islands of spreadsheets. There was no line of sight visibility, the inability to actually uh, uh, track that um, these particular products and services have been delivered to uh, the requirements of the standard has been extremely difficult. Uh, delivering assurance to the retailer at the other end who wants to be assured of the quality or integrity of its supply was impossible to do. Uh, but now we can start to do that because we have the cloud and because we have visual data input uh, devices such as digital cameras, even to the extent of tracking trays of avocados, as we see here, going to take a picture of them where they arrive in Australia to see whether there is in fact any quality degradation and they're, perhaps they're ripening at the, at the right times, etc. I won't go into any more depth on that, but I guess you get the visualization. This is just some of the ways in which the structure of the audit is applied to, is, 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 um, uh, is delivered, if you like, so that the auditor can use their laptop or the iPad or the iPhone, depending on, on, on screen, uh, the, their requirements, if you like, and, and take um, down evidence using uh, voice uh, recognition, sort of voice input, and take pictures, uploading images, file uploading, uh, structuring corrective action, uh, working online and offline, uh, pressing a button and producing uh, a report that pulls together all of that analysis into automated reports, a vision of the uh, auditor. And then because everybody's using all your auditors are using the same platform. They don't need to be part of the same program. They could be internal auditors, external auditors, um, but you can actually start to pull that together to get a picture of entire industries or clusters. 
Now, this is something that has been done with the uh, New Zealand wine industry. Um, the auditors that audit at least 60% of the wine uh, farms in this part of the world uh, use the same platform. And as a result of that, you can start to gather data that looks across the whole of that industry, figure out what the, this is actually about food safety, but uh, what the strengths and weaknesses of the various regimes are, and you can start to then put in continuous improvement programs across the whole region and the cluster, rather than trying to do it on an individual basis. And that all comes from the starting point of an auditor uh, in the field, uh, to, exercising their enormous uh, experience, uh, making judgment calls, but doing it in a way in which you can capture that data and pull it together so that you can get a unified whole and uh, a greater sense of understanding. If we look at the ISO side, there's a, a certification body called TELOC in New Zealand that, um, according to the Jazz and Register, uh, does something like you know 60% uh, or close to 60% of the uh, ISO uh, certifications in in this area, and they, as a result of uh, using these tools, are growing their share. They're increasing the the extent of the market because not only can they impress their clients with the visibility and integrity of their audit. Uh, but they can also start to provide added value data, which doesn't mean that they're moving into being consultants, but they're just organizing the data so that the client can get greater uh, value out of that. I'll just drop into one screen here, and I hope you can see the detail here. This is uh, an ISO. Uh, they say that 80% of the ISOs, it's kind of changing as they move into, into uh, um, security, but it's ISO 9001, 14001, and 45001. And a lot of those questions, uh, a lot of, quite a bit of repetition of questions across those three, three areas. Um, in this particular case, a system has been built uh, so that the questions are integrated. Because you're on the same platform, you can do multi-schemes. You can get multi-schemes and multi-audits going and arrive at a point where you can answer, ask a question once uh, uh, or seek evidence once and it flows over into the questions whose meaning remains the same. Uh, there's also the ability to, to have the um, question management capability. So by ticking, looking at management processes down there, if you just tick the areas that you're actually going to be auditing that day, your questions are automatically assembled for you as an auditor and you're able to then focus on the things that matter for this particular audit. So setting up question sets, it can be done automatically uh, utilizing just smart software to actually do that. It makes the audit simpler for you. And then the automation, if you like, of the reporting uh, reduces your time quite significantly. Uh, this is an example again of uh, the question and uh, input response. Uh, input. In this particular example, what I'm really just trying to show is that the, um, the integration of the audits, you're able to do the three audits at the same time, if of course the protocols of that uh, regime um, allow or that scheme allow, and then input the evidence, uh, do your notes, capture your images, uh, then click the, uh, the print button and produce an audit. The in the inputs that we're getting, the results that we're getting from some of the case studies is that there's a 20% reduction in the time it takes to actually do the audit that comes to a certain extent from assembling the pre-audit uh, well, uh, but to a large extent, the automation of the report itself. And that's on the first audit. If you're doing multi-scheme audits, if you can do that, there'll be a significantly greater amount. And in particular, when you revisit the audit, uh, the ability to actually have all of the materials of the previous audit all pulled together very nicely, perhaps without the results in place, but to be able to pick up from where you left off and then focus on the areas of, uh, of weakness uh, may produce a better audit and also enable continuous improvement programs to come off the back of the audit itself. So that's a have a look at ISO. Um, and here's another example. This is um, this is a United States company, uh, JJ Keller, who do more of the compliance and quality assessments of the transportation uh, industry. 
Uh, there is something like six different audit requirements. Previously, those were six different spreadsheets with six different manuals about, um, about those audits and what was required. Uh, those have been integrated into one uh, particular system uh, so that they can be handled more easily and you can produce uh, reports that look uh, something like this. This actually just in very short shape pulls together all of those um, those six from general, from driver, from operations, vehicle, hazmat, accidents, etc. Um, those six data sources and pulls them together so you can have some benchmarking, some barometer uh, statistics and understand what it's about. Behind this is not only their audit, but some data feeds that come from government departments, uh, the inspections on the side of the road of these particular uh, vehicles. A massive productivity gain and a knowledge gain, not only for uh, the, um, the clients themselves, uh, but also for the government agencies that are monitoring what are some of the biggest killers on the planet, the, um, these large um, uh, pantechnicisms and uh, petrol browsers and that sort of thing on our, on our roads. So that's um, a, some examples, but uh, when it boils down to it, it's all about the data. It's a kind of anthropological, anthropological phenomenon that we as humans uh, understand that he who has the biggest brain wins. Uh, the neural network that is um, uh, that is the most uh, successful uh, will win. The tribe who has the tribal intelligence will win. And this is all about gathering that data and being able to aggregate it into the cloud, onto databases, being able to process and share it, to do benchmarking and uh, and trend trend analysis. And the greatest one of the greatest assets in the knowledge world are the arm armies of auditors that are out there that perhaps aren't uh, uh, foraging the data, harvesting the data and aggregating it together. But that's the next step, I believe, in the, into the, in the future of, of what this is about. I'm not going to try and uh, predict the future of audit. I think there are better brains there, but I do say that it's all about using tools that capture and harvest data effectively that then actually uh, can be transformed into cloud-based technologies so that uh, uh, other people can share and add to that data and grow its, uh, its relevancy. It's to be able to visualize that data and understand what it's, what it's about. It's about looking at um, the processes and systems as well as the outputs and being able to visualize that together in much the same way as that knowledge and navigator did in the past. So the future of the uh, auditor, I believe the digital auditor will become a knowledge navigator. It'll be somebody who actually says, we've got an audit task. Where is the knowledge for that audit task? How can I automate uh, what can be automated? How can I harvest that knowledge and automate the production of understanding as a result of, of all of that? And there'll be much more emphasis in system design of these systems, so real-time uh, auditing can occur. It doesn't have to wait for one part, one time in the year. It is continuous with red light and other, other things in the future. But it's a terrific area to be part of. Uh, the harvesting of that, that data and the processing of it is one of the most important things, particularly as we learn from COVID. You could argue that uh, COVID was a result of poor food safety the need for us to have visibility and understanding of the supply chain to improve our qualities of all sorts of systems is now greater than ever. Thank you very much. And thank you, Keith Phillips, for that compelling look at the ongoing digital transformation of the auditing function. And that concludes this presentation.